Will GPT automate all the jobs? There's a new study that's out and it suggests we might not be completely screwed, maybe just a little bit for now and more later. This actually comes right from OpenAI and the University of Pennsylvania. And it's called the early look at the labor market impact potential of large language models. They're talking about GPT-4. I'll link to this down below if you wanna check it out. Now I'll jump straight to the conclusion, the verdict here. And it basically says about half of workers could have half or more of their tasks exposed to LLMs. LLMs are large language models. GPT-4 is a large language model. Does that include software developers? Yes, more on that shortly, including some jobs that will not get exposed at all if you wanna switch careers. The key word here is exposure. Are you feeling exposed right now? I'm feeling a bit exposed. What does exposure mean here? Basically, exposure shows how much a task is impacted by these language models. The more exposed a task is, the quicker and easier it gets with these cool AI helpers. Picture this, you're at work and you're doing your daily tasks and suddenly you realize that some of those tasks could actually be handled by an AI language model. This is the point of exposure. You have the ability, access, and you start using these tools. It's like you're in the kitchen making a sandwich, you put some mayonnaise on your bread with your finger, and then you discover a knife in your drawer. You then spread the mayo with the knife. You're now exposed to this amazing thing called the knife. And this thing is going to save you from getting mayo all over your hands. Regardless of your job, there is a chance that GPTs will impact you or your work life in the future. It says that approximately 80% of the US workforce could have at least 10% of their work affected by the introduction of GPT and around 19% of workers may see at least 50%, half of their tasks impacted. Higher income jobs potentially facing even more exposure. These professions could see the most disruption. These are interpreters, uh, translators, poets, lyricists, creative writers, public relations specialists, authors, mathematicians have it pretty bad over here. Look at this. Mathematicians could be affected up to 100%. Tax preparers, 100%. Blockchain engineers are listed on here. Pretty high exposure right there. Accountants, auditors, journalists, programmers aren't too far behind. I'll get to that in a second. There's a really colorful chart that's really tiny also showing uh, the various industries and their their exposure index. So at the bottom of that list is support activities for agriculture, for agriculture and forestry. It's sideways. That's why I'm wood product manufacturing, forestry and logging. Those are very unlikely to get replaced and automated. I mean, there is programmers working in all those industries. So you might have some exposure there and you probably will. But if you're closer to these industries like wood product manufacturing in general, in that industry, you're going to have less people exposed. But if you're a programmer working for a wood product manufacturing company, you're still gonna get affected. There's also a matter of education to consider. Individuals holding a bachelor's or master's degree and professional degrees are actually more exposed to GPTs than those without formal education. This is the regression of occupation level human and da, 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 da. I'm not gonna read all that to you. You can read it. Basically, this table explores the relationship between the exposure of various basic skills and the importance of GPTs in the different occupations. But what's interesting about this one is look at this. There's programming right there on the list. This basically summarizes that these are the professions where you can take the most advantage of GPTs. And if you can take the most advantage of it, well, that means the company you're working for also can take advantage of GPTs. That's a little foreshadowing of what I'm going to talk about. Now, it's important to know that just because the exposure percentages are listed here, it doesn't mean that they're fully automatable by GPTs. You might be able to draw those conclusions, but I wouldn't jump to that just yet. This is just a study that's saying that GPT can save workers in these areas a significant amount of time doing their tasks. You can draw your own conclusions later. The next table talks about education levels. As your education level increases, the average exposure to GPTs also increases. This correlates pretty much directly with the median income, and this is where we're getting the uh, the more you make, the more you're exposed as well. So let's talk about programmers. Right here it says, we discover that roles heavily reliant on science and critical thinking skills show a negative correlation with exposure. So areas where you're required to use your brain, 
basically <laughs> you're not really exposed as much because well you're talking to a machine that basically regurgitates information and reformats information it's not really coming up with novel ideas that's where humans still excel but then it goes to insult programmers uh, and it says while programming and writing skills are positively associated with gpt exposure i'm just kidding it's not insulting programmers it's just saying that programmers and writers have more exposure so programmers are on the hit list this is both good and bad it's good because in the short term as programmers this will help our jobs out right copilot copilot x with all those awesome tools that help us do our jobs i would even say it makes our jobs easier right but what happens when a job is easy to do? Well, eventually that job becomes lower paying and there are more and more people that can do that job. So the market is oversaturated, which means you need to get better or potentially lose that job. I recently talked about my buddy Joe in a video warning about standing still and not progressing in your software engineering journey. I'll link to that video down below in the description, right below that like button. Oh, and if you're down there, you might as well just hit that like button. So is this gonna affect you? Well, think about it this way. Um, you're not losing your job tomorrow. Think about your company that you work for, if you are working for a company. These are organizations of different sizes and organizations that are keen on saving a buck or two. And there's a lot of organizations like that. They'll be keeping a close eye on who they can cut and replace with automation. It won't be direct. It won't be like, sorry, you gotta go. GPT is gonna take your job. It won't be that cut and dry. It'll be more insidious than that it'll fester and uh, be around until somebody realizes well what do we need joe for now what about those jobs that aren't going to be affected by gpts at least not until boston dynamic robots and gpt companies both get purchased by one big company that decides to merge them together and make an army of that's a scary thought and we've probably seen that movie haven't we luckily this study lists all these jobs that have no exposure at the moment at all and according to the study they can't be automated i actually did wash dishes at one point i was 15 and i really liked that job nowadays i use gpt i use uh, image generating ais and i use copilot it's making my life easier i hope to stay on top of it i hope to use it to my advantage and i suggest the same to to everybody get familiar with woodworking i'm just kidding <laughs> no woodworking is really great i love doing stuff in my shop but if you're a software developer and you're worried about your job or if you're just learning how to be a software developer you're still okay in my opinion you would be good for a number of years but just don't stand still keep learning stuff these ais are going to be here to stay you might as well use them to your advantage there's going to be a number of things that we're going to need to talk about in general as a society about the rise of these gpts because if we are not gonna have trust in them that they're gonna go potentially underground we certainly don't want a bunch of underground people to be the only ones that are using gpts as far as laws go and lawmaking gpts should be outlawed or severely restricted because there's always going to be others that are going to be able to use them to their full advantage and if there's others that can use them to our full to their full advantage why why, why shouldn't we be able to? There's a matter of trust. There's a matter of ethics and safety concerns that we should always think about. These are difficult problems to solve. This is all brand new stuff. We're not familiar with this territory. So all we can do is just try to adapt. And humans are good at that. Now, one thing that this paper doesn't get into is the exponential growth. Uh, this is version three already that they're on in the last few days. I've read the first one and the third one. Maybe they're going to keep going with these studies. I'd like to see more of these. And if you want more reviews on these, let me know down in the comments below. Again, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more developer-focused stuff. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.